Okay, Marian says yes. Uh, Shom um, Germain. Guys, if you're following up, please indicate in the chat box, indicate in the chat box so I am sure that uh, we are all on the same page. Okay, great. So um, let's kick off with today's class. So in our previous sessions, we looked at um, the introduction to digital marketing. We looked at the evolution of digital marketing. Then we equally talked about the pillars of digital marketing. So I said there are three major pillars of digital marketing. We have the search engine optimization, we have the social media marketing, and we have the PPCO, the search engine marketing. So we've looked at search engine optimization, we've looked at social media marketing, and today we are going to be looking at search engine marketing, okay? And of course, after search engine marketing, we are going to go through the other modules such as affiliate marketing, we'll talk a little bit about affiliate marketing, email marketing, we're going to talk about data analytics, we're going to talk about um, Google Analytics, Google Data Studio, and so on. So I hope we are ready for uh, today's um, session. All right, so in today's class, we are going to begin with PPC or what we call SCM. So another way of calling PPC, another name for PPC is SCM. PPC simply means pay per click. All right, and SEM simply means search engine optimization. They are all the same, okay? So what is pay-per-click? So we're going to look at the definition of pay-per-click or PPC. So pay-per-click is a type of sponsored online advertisement that is used on a wide range of websites, including search engines where the advertiser only pays if a web user clicks on their ad, hence the title, PPC or pay per click, okay? So advertisers place bid on keywords or phrases that they think their target audience will type in a search field when they are looking for specific goods or services. So now what is this PPC? Now let me break it down. Let me make you to understand far more better. And I'm going to do this with a practical example. Whenever you go to a search engine and you want to search for a particular item, <clears throat> you want to search for a particular service, or you want to do a research. Once you type in that feed, uh, that search term, any word which you type here, any word which you type in your search bar, or when you type here, that word in digital marketing is known as a search term. Okay, you as an audience type in this word, it is known as a search term. So whenever a user types a search term like say rent a car. He or she is given several results that are related to that particular search term, okay? So when you type rent a car, you receive several results. So these are search results. These results, these results which you have here are known as what? Search results. So you see here results for DERA. So they are giving you information related to your location, okay? If you have not indicated that the system should should um, actually um, should actually uh, monitor where you are located, then it's just going to give you a general location. Okay. Now, when you do this search, um, Google is going to actually tell you the total number of results, total number of search results for this particular search term. So, when you type this word "rent a car," Google is able to see this particular search term 859 million times, okay? Google is able to see it 859 million times. That's why we have 859 million results. And this search takes 0 0.5 seconds for you to get the results. So each time you type this word, immediately I type the word rent a car and I click enter, it took 0 0.67 seconds for me to get this result, okay? So that's the meaning of the 0 0.67 seconds you have here. And this result simply means the total number of times this um, word 
has been shown, okay, that has been displayed to you, okay? So once you do your search, what happens is that Google actually gives you various results. These are what we call the search results. Now, there are two types of results, like we earlier mentioned when we were looking at SEO. There are two types of search results. We have the paid ads and we have the free ads. In our previous class, we talked about the free ads. And I made mention of the fact that the paid ads will always carry the AD beside them, while the free ads will not carry the AD beside them. Okay? So in today's class, we're going to be talking about the paid ads only. Okay? These paid ads are known as what we call search engine marketing, or what we call PPC. Now, why do we call it PPC? PPC here simply means that Whenever you see a paid ad, note that the company that created that ad will only be charged. Google will only charge that company whenever you click on their ad, which means that after searching this word rent a car, we had various results. We had one, two, three. Three. Okay. So for this first page, we had. Um, four results, three at the top, one at the bottom, okay? So we had three paid results. These paid results are known as well the search engine marketing. So Google only charges these companies whenever a user or an audience clicks on the ad. So if I want Google to charge rental cars, I will click on this ad. And immediately I click on the ad, that is when Google is going to charge this company. But if I just type the search term and I don't click on any paid ad, Google is not going to charge these companies for that, for that uh, search result. Okay, so that's the meaning of PPC. PPC simply means pay per click. Okay, so you, the companies only pay when someone click on their ad. I hope that is clear. Now, who creates this ad? These ads are being created by digital marketing experts. It needs, you actually need to have digital marketing skills to be able to create paid ads. Whereas for free ads, anybody can do it. If you're a web developer, you can actually create free ads. If you have ideas in web development, you can actually create free ads. But when it comes to paid ads, you must have digital marketing skills. You must be a digital marketing specialist before you will be able to do what? To create this ad, because it takes time. You need to take time to study and understand how these ads are being created. Because if you don't understand how the ads are being created, you are not going to get the best results out of the ads which you are going to create. Okay, so that's the meaning of advertiser. That's the meaning of, um, Advertisers do place bits on keywords or phrases that they think their target audience will type in a search field. So as a digital marketing expert, if you are creating an ad, you want to advertise a business, you want to advertise a company, okay? So you are going to choose words. These words which you are choosing are known as what? Keywords. So when you are creating that ad, you need to put in those words which you believe people are always going to be searching for it. Okay, so once you already know that these are the words people search usually about your business, you are going to use that word on the ad which you are creating. Now, once you use the words on that ad and people come to the various search engines and type that particular word, your ad is going to show to them. Okay, so the word rent a car, okay, can, be known, can either be known as a search term or a keyword. It is known as a search term to the audience. The person typing that word on this search bar, that word is known as a search term to that person. So if that person wants to do a, a research, he's going to say, okay, I'm doing a research on this search term. I have a search term which I want to do a research on. And the search term is what? Rent a car. So after this class, you should be able to tell someone, when someone says, he wants to do a research. He has some words which he wants to do research on, okay? You will tell the person, no. What you are calling a word or a sentence is known as a search term, okay? So this is a search term which you want to place or you want to use in order to get results. Now, as a digital marketing expert, these search terms are normally supposed to be in your ad, okay? So 
Once you, as a digital marketer, use this particular word rent a car, it is no longer called a search term. It is known as a keyword. Okay, it is known as a keyword. You, as a digital marketer, uses this as a keyword while the audience uses it as a search term. This is crystal clear. Try to understand what I am explaining. Okay, so that is that's the difference between a keyword and a search term. Now. I've shown you the difference between paid ads and free ads, and I'm going to be explaining, I'm going to be expanding more about PPC. Now, when it comes to paid ads, there are always usually seven and below ads on every page, okay? On every first page of Google, you can only find maximum of seven paid ads, okay? This page has, um, four ads, okay, three at the top and one at the bottom. So they are usually seven ads, four at the top and three at the bottom. So it can be less. So at the top, you can have four ads or below. And at the bottom, you can have three ads or below. Now, let me, let me use another example. Let's search for, let's use this search term, rent a house. Okay, let's use the search term, rent a house. I am sure this one is going to give us more ads. All right, so looking at this search term, let me change my location. I don't want this. This location is giving me, um, all right, let's just work with this. So this location is giving me results only in one city I want. Oh, I can't update that. All right, so we've searched the word rent a house. And on this page, we have three at the top. Okay, three paid ads at the top and none at the bottom. Okay, so there is no ad at the bottom. Guys, let me see if I can. I need another window, let me see. I hope this one will not be specific. This is still specific. This is still specific. Okay, they are still precising the, the, the uh, I didn't want this location, let me see. All right, guys, let's continue. So on this search result, we have three at the top, okay? three at the top and none at the bottom. Then here we have three at the top and one at the bottom, okay? So on every search result page, there are always maximum of four ads at the top and maximum of three at the bottom, making it seven, but you can have less than that, okay? You can have less than that. So that is it as far as, um, paid ads are concerned and the total number of ads which you can find on each page. Okay, I hope it is understood. Is that okay? Well, I came late, so I'm lost, sorry. Okay, I believe you're going to catch up with time. So um, that's just how um, paid ads look like, okay? So let's continue. So advertisers place bid on keywords or phrases that they think their target audience will type in a search field when they are looking for specific goods or service. Now, when, uh, when audiences use the search term, advertisers probably use this as a keyword in their ads. And 
advertisers or digital marketing experts, they do pay for these keywords. They do pay for these keywords. So you see this particular word, which is highlighted here, renter, rent, uh, car rental. This company has paid for this keyword. So there is what we call bidding. Okay, there is what we call bidding strategy when it comes to digital marketing, when it comes to search engine marketing or PPC. Now, when you look at this ad carefully, you notice that rental car, rental cars is at the top. Then we have Sky Cars second, and we have MK Rental Cars on the third position. Now, these are the various positions. So there are seven positions on the first page, four positions at the top, and three at the bottom, maximum. Okay, maximum of four at the top and maximum three at the bottom. Now, this website, they don't just appear at random at the top or at the bottom. Rental car is at the top because they bid higher for this keyword. This particular keyword rents a car. This company has placed a bid. It means they have told Google that Google, we are willing to pay $7 per click or we are willing to pay $2 per click. So if that two dollars which they are paying per click is higher than what others are paying, then their ad is going to arrive at the top. Google is going to place their ad at the top, which means whenever it's a keyword, this company is going to appear first. Okay, so if I change this, let's change this to car rental. All right, so I've changed the word to car rental, and now we have how many ads at the at the top, we have one, two, three, four. And at the bottom, let's see if we have any ads. At the bottom, we have one. Okay, you see it has changed. We've just trans, we have just changed the, the words, but they have the same meaning. We've changed the search term, but it has the same meaning. So we have car rental. It therefore means that there is one company here, which is this one, this economy car rental, okay. They did not use the word rent a car on their ad. The word which they used was what? Car rental. That's the reason why they were not appearing when we type what? The car, type the car. Okay? That's the reason why they did not show up when we type the word rent a car. But now they have shown up because we use car rental and they, that's, the key, that's the search term they use or that's the keyword they use on their ad when they were creating that ad. That is why they are now Part of this and when you look at this ad rent a car is bidding higher he's paying higher higher per click um car felix is paying this in the second in terms of this keyword which we have used here for this search term and of course economic is the fourth and we have the mk rent a car is the third okay so those who those who pay higher those who bid higher are always placed at the top now there are different types of um Google ads, these are what we call Google ads and there are several types of Google ads. We have the text ads, we have video ads, we have display or image ads. We have shopping ads, okay? These are the different types of Google ads. Now let's begin with the first, which is a text ad. So any ad, when I talk about ad, I mean the paid ads. Any ads that just come in a plain text, there are no images attached to it, then that is what we call a text ad because it only carries a text. For example, this is a rental cars. This is a text ad. This is a text ad. This is a text ad, and this is a text ad. There are no images associated to these ads. That's why it is called a text ad. And if I scroll down, the last one, of course, equally has what? It's equally a text ad. Okay, this is page one. And if you go to page two, see so it's loading page two. So on page two, we only have one paid ad here at the top. I don't know if we have one at the bottom and we have one here at the bottom. So if I go to the next page is the next page, we see have one at the top, one at the bottom. We go to the fourth page, one at the top, one at the bottom, we go to the fifth page. You notice that rental car is almost on all the pages. You see this is rental car on the fifth page, rental car, if I scroll up again, rental car is on the fourth page, rental car, which means this is one of the biggest company in the United Arab Emirates that runs at when it comes to car rental services. Okay, nobody compares with them. All right, so this is how a text ad look like. Okay, now let's talk about a shopping ad. Now, companies like Amazon, they don't usually, they don't really, really fancy um, P, they don't really fancy text ads. They fancy what image ad because they deal with the sales of products. 
And people obviously want to see the image of a product. They want to see the price of the product. They want to see the company that is selling that product before they even click on the ad. So let's take an example. Let's say I want to purchase an iPhone. Let's say um, iPhone 12. Let's say iPhone 12 Pro Max. So once I type the word iPhone 12 Pro Max, this is an ad that appears here. How do I know this is a paid ad? If you look at the top here, you're going to see the word ADS. So this ADS um, simply means what? Paid ads, ads in plural, okay? So these are variety of ads and these are known as shopping ads. How do I know they are shopping ads? These are some of the categories, categories of a shopping ad. For an ad to be called a shopping ad, it must, has, it must have an image, it must have the name of the product which you are selling, it must have the price of the product, it must have the company that is selling that product. All right, so look at this product, iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, that's the name of the product. We have the price, which is 2,670 grams. We have the company that is selling the product, which is what, the uh, Revibi, okay? The next one here is iPhone 14 Pro Max, sold by Amazon, the name of the product, the image, the price, and the name of the company selling that product. Same with this. Reverb is selling this, Amazon is selling this, uh, Sharap DG is selling this. These are examples of shopping ads. Now let's go to, let's say Adidas. Adidas sport shoe. Okay, so you see Adidas Sport Shoe, these are products or these are products, okay? So you see Adidas Sport Shoe, we have the image, the, pro, the, the name of the product, the price, the company selling that product and so on and so forth. So shopping ads are usually created, are usually used by companies that deal with products, okay? So when you are selling a product, you're selling a car, you're selling a shoe, accessories, then the best campaign, the best ad you should be creating for an, for a company should be what? Shopping ads. This is how shopping ads look like. The next kind of ad we're going to be looking at is what we call a video ad. Another name for a video ad is what we call the YouTube ad, okay? So if I open a YouTube channel, for example, if I open a YouTube channel, for example, <clears throat> So this is, a, this is a YouTube channel, okay? Now, when I click on a video, for example, if I click on this video, now, once I click on the video, see what happens. The video which I wanted to watch do, does not appear immediately. Rather, we have another video which is playing on the background. As you can see, this is not the video we wanted to watch, but the video is playing. Now, this video, I can only watch the one I wanted to watch by either waiting for this one to play right up to the end or I skip the video here, okay? Or I skip the video here. This video which interrupts your videos each time you're watching a video on YouTube is known as a YouTube or a video ad, okay? So if I want to watch the video which I intended watching, I'm just going to click on the skip ad, then, this is the, then we are going to watch the video which we wanted. This is known as a YouTube ad, and there are different types of YouTube ads. We have what we call the bumper ad, we have a skippable ad, we have the non-skippable ads. Now, skippable video ads are, are video ads which when they start playing, you can see the skip ad button, you click on it and you're going to skip it, okay? Now, no skippable ad, you have to wait for that video to play for about five seconds, or you have to wait for the video to play right up to the end, so you cannot skip it. And these videos are usually about five to six seconds, okay? Maximum can be 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, then the video, then your video which you wanted to watch is going to pop up. Then we have what we call a bumper, bumper ad. Now, bumper ads are those kind of ads which when you're watching a video, it interrupts you, okay? So there are videos which always begins at the beginning of your ad, and there are videos that interrupt you with, uh, in between your ads. Those ones that pop up in between your ads are known as bumper ads, okay? So that is what um, a YouTube ad is, <clears throat> okay? The next type of ad which we are going to talk about is a display ad. 
Now, what is a display art? Display arts are those kind of arts which are created to be shown on partner websites. Okay, so Google has several partner websites, and most partner websites are owned by bloggers. Okay, so bloggers usually um, partner with Google so that Google can use their website to show what we call display ads. So Google shows ads on its own products. Google shows display ads on its own product and equally show display ads on other people's website. Now, when this video was played, I am sure you saw uh, an image that popped up in front of your screen, right? An image that popped up in front of your screen, just an image. That is what we call a display ad. So display ads can either show on partner websites or they can show on YouTube because YouTube is equally a product of Google. Now, let me show you how a partner uh, a, a display ad looks like. Now, I'm going to take a very simple website, which I'm sure we are all familiar with. I'm going to open the Mimefor website. So we have Mimefor-infos.com. So this particular website is a partner to Google, okay? Google uses this website to show ads. Google uses this website to show ads. Now, this is an ad. This is what we call a display ad, right? What you see an online company formation. This is a paid ad. How do I know it is a paid ad? If I hover my mouse over this icon here, what you see here, I should be able to see ads by Google. Okay. It's not showing, let me scroll down. You'll we'll be able to see another one. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, look at this ad, okay? If you look at this ad carefully, when I take my mouse, I hover my mouse over this button, you see what? Ads by Google, okay? So Google is paying Mimi Mefo for showing ads on her website. This is another ad here, ads by Google. Ads by Google. If I scroll down, you might be able to see another ad. Okay, there is no. So in some articles, when you open an article, you might be able to see an ad. This is see another ad. I've just clicked on an article. I have not even started in the article and an ad has popped up. This is an ad by Google as well. See my Google ad settings. So. So this is how a display ad looks like. Okay, so we've talked about text ads, we've talked about video ads, we've talked about shopping ads, and we've talked about um, video, we've talked about display ads. Now there are other types of ads which I cannot show you here because you only you only learn that one when you want to actually create it, like shopping ads, all right, like um, mobile app ads, and so on. Okay, so most of the ads which you see on your mobile devices, when you want to play a game on your mobile phone, an ad is popping up. When you want to watch maybe a video on mobile phone, an ad is popping up, okay? And you notice that there are some people who, people who develop mobile applications and give out for free. They don't just give out those mobile applications for free. They are actually, they are actually partners of Google, okay? That's why before you even do something on these applications, you are going to watch like five or six different ads. You have several interruptions. Okay, so those are all we call mobile app ads, and we probably have shopping ads. Shopping ads are mostly used by e-commerce platform. Any question? Any question from the explanations I've just given? Yes, sir. please. I want to understand when uh, when you're using. When you do your search, you go to a pay app. Can you use the pay app? Can can you use it normally as the unpaid app? Come again, I've not understood your question. Come again. What I'm asking is if you're doing your research, you go to a pay app, can you have all the information in a pay app than the unpaid app? Now, one thing you need to understand when it comes to paid app is that Everybody has an agenda why they are creating an ad. Most pay ads, most paid ads, when you visit them, they will always have premium content. Okay, people don't just create paid ads to give you advertisement for free or to give you resources for free. 
Any company that is creating paid ads simply means that you'll be going to that website to get premium services. Yes. Is that okay? For example, if I'm going okay. to rent a car, I've just done a search, rent a car. Okay, let me just show you what I'm saying. I've just done a research here about rent a car. If I'm going to this website, I am not going to learn so many things about cars. What I'm going there to do is to get a service, which I'm going to pay for, right? I'm going there to get a service. Mm -hmm a paid service. Now, when you look at the free ads, the free ads will give you like, for example, if, I'm, if, I, if I go to this, this is a shopping ad, right? If I click on this shopping ad, it means I want to buy this product. This company is barely advertising its product. But now, if I come to this ad here, this GS Marina, they have the keyword in their ad. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is there. But this particular ad maybe will just be giving you specifications and the importance or the benefits of using iPhone 12 Pro Max to see I've just come here, they are giving me specifications and all that, okay? So I'm trying to learn more about this product. So you're going to get things that are more detailed on free ads than on paid ads. So if you are trying to get your research and you type in maybe a particular search term, always go for the free ads because I think you're going to get a very good material from there. And of course in Cameroon, we don't really have so many paid ads. We don't really have a lot of companies that run paid ads. They are very limited. We even talk about seven ads per page. I'm not sure if you type, if you have your Google Chrome right now, just search for anything. You're not going to have up to, even up to four ads. Sometimes you do a research and you will not see any paid ad. <clears throat> you mostly see the word free ads. Any question? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any question? Please, uh, have you, I don't know. Have you thought um, how to create the ad? Because uh, how to create it already or to input an information in Google? To be able to create an ad, that can take, that takes forever. That is part of the advanced training program. It takes a very long time. We cannot cover that within uh, the period which we specify for this course. Google Ads, Google Ads okay. itself Thank is you. more than, yes, it's more than, it's a, it's more than a month is a more than a month course. So it is part of the advanced training program which runs for four months. So we are just okay. giving you a highlight. We are just trying to ensure that you understand the concepts very well. Because um, there are so many students, the reasons why we decided to introduce this course is because there are so many students who really want to, maybe they have heard about digital marketing. They don't really understand what it is. So they really want, we want students to understand the material, understand the concepts very well. And of course, it is going to help them if they want to take the course or not. And again, please, um, there are so many companies out there that when they are recruiting you, even as a marketer, okay, they are recruiting you even as a marketer. If you have basic knowledge, even in digital marketing, it's really going to help you. Be it marketer or be it in any field, once you have a, a good understanding of digital marketing, you can help your company to grow. You can help your company to move from one, from one level to another. Just take an example. You've gone through the fundamentals of digital marketing and you went to, maybe you went online, you're working for a company now, for example. And uh, after this training program, you notice that your company does not even have a, a Facebook page. Your company does not have a website. That is already an input that if you put down your manager and try to explain things to him, you know that you are very serious. And with things like that, maybe there is somebody who is, saying he is this person, whereas he is not actually doing what is necessary for the group of the company. That is how you contribute to the group of a company. So it is not only for those who want to become digital marketing experts, it is for everyone who try to get the knowledge so that it can improve. Because remember, the most important aspect of every company is good. The most important aspect of every company is to make sales. And the marketing department is the key, is the back Backbone for that, okay? You can become an accountant, yes. But if the company is not growing, if they're not getting clients and so on, it means that you won't be able to get results. You won't be able to get, your salary will not be paid on time because maybe we don't have clients who will come for you to start keeping their records, okay? So the marketing department is very, very important. It is a forefront, okay? That is where, that's the beginning of the growth of every company. That is why it is very, very vital and we encourage students from every department to take the digital marketing training program because it cuts across every other discipline.
Okay, guys, any question as far as as far as um, the what we have just done is concerned before I continue. All right, so what does it take for you to actually um, build a good uh, digital market uh, uh, search engine marketing campaign? What are the basic search engine marketing strategies? Now, before you start a Google ad or before you start a, digital, uh, uh, a search engine marketing campaign, there are a few things which you need to put in place. And you're going to learn more about this in the advanced course. The first thing you need to do is to think about the keywords you're going to use for your ad and to equally allocate your budget. Keywords are the focal point because without keywords, your audience will not be able to see your ad. For example, if you're creating an ad where you want to give out, you want to rent a, a, a building, a very beautiful building out for your clients or for your audience, then that word rent a car is not in your in that a particular text which you're using for your ad. The word rent a car is not there. The word rent a car is not there. The word car rental is not there. So long as those keywords are not there, when people type in the search term, your ad will not show to them, which means that you will create an ad and it will not be displayed to your audience. Of course, if the ad is not displayed, Google will not charge you. But the reason why you are creating an ad is because you want it to be displayed and you want people to click on it, even if they are charging you so that they can actually um, get your, your services. Okay, so you need to have very vital keywords. There is what we call keyword planning. Okay, this part of the advanced class, we teach you how to actually get very good keywords, the tools which you can use to get keywords which you're going to use for your ad. The next thing is what? Budgeting. Remember, when it comes to paid ads, Google only charges these companies when they click on your ad. So you need to ask yourself, if I am expecting 10 clicks per day, how much am I, how much am I supposed to budget? So you are budgeting according to the number, according to the results you are willing to get. Okay. And of course, before creating such an ad, there is a tool which you need to use. There's a tool which you're going to use to know the number of searches for that particular keyword, the number of clicks for that particular keyword. So if a particular keyword is being clicked, let's say 10,000 times in a month, or it's being clicked 1,000 times in a day, then you just need to estimate that if I am ranked at the top, if I am bidding higher than every other person, it means that my ad is likely to be clicked 1,000 times in a day. So what do you have to do at that particular position? You need to think about your budget. How much should I spend? How much should I pay per click? Should I pay one cent? Should I pay two cents? Should I pay five cents? Should I pay one dollar per click? It all depends on your budget. So you need to work on your budget, how much you believe you can spend in a day. And of course, you multiply by 10 to know how much you think you can spend in a month. The next aspect is what? The creation of the art. Acquire. You need to make sure that you know the kind of campaign you are creating for your company or for your clients. For example, if an e-commerce platform approaches you that they want you to create an ad for them, obviously you should be thinking about what? Shopping ads. You should be thinking of shopping ads. You cannot be creating text ad for an e-commerce platform. It's not going to help them, okay? And text ad is far more expensive than shopping ads. So you should be going for shopping ads. Remember, when it comes to shopping ads, let me just give you one advantage the shopping ad has over the other ads. When it comes to shopping ads, when someone searches for this, for example, okay, and clicks on this ad and it goes to a website, Google will not charge this company at this particular level. Google will charge these companies selling this particular shoe only when somebody buys this product. So 1 million people can search for this particular product. They click on it. If they don't make a purchase, Google will not charge this company as compared to a text ad. As far as a text ad is concerned, so long as someone clicks on the ad, Google is going to charge this company. So those are things you need to understand. Because if you go and create a normal text ad for an e-commerce platform, it means that at the end of the day, 
10,000 people can click on the ad and they're going to charge a company when the company has not made any sales. So if 10,000 people click on an ad and the company has zero sales, it therefore means the company is at a loss. So you should be thinking about what? A shopping ad. The company will only be charged when someone clicks on the ad, goes to the website, purchases the ad. Only when purchases is being done, that is when they are going to charge for that click. Those are things you need to understand as far as this is concerned. If you want to create an ad, let's say for you have an image, we have a training program coming up which you design a flyer. Obviously, you should be creating what? A display ad. You should be creating a display. And this display ad will be shown in between maybe YouTube videos, okay, as an image. It can be shown now on partner websites, those bloggers or websites, newspaper websites that have been part that have partnered with Google. If you have a video, if a YouTuber contacts you and says he wants to grow his page, he wants to have so many followers, he wants people to, um, he wants people to, uh, to watch his video, he needs so many views, then you should be thinking about what? Video ads. Those are some of the strategies which you need to learn and understand. The next is what we call convert. What is convert or what is conversion? Any profitable action taking place on your website is known as conversion. So at the end of every act, the main purpose is for what? For you to actually gain your objective, which is either to generate sales or to um, generate leads, okay? So generate sales and generate leads. And how can you generate more sales and more leads? You should have a very good landing page. All these ads which you are creating, these ads take you to a specific page. Okay, there is no ad here that you are going to click on the ad and it's going to take you to a home page. There is no paid ad that when you click on it, it takes you to a home page. All paid ads take you to a specific page. That specific page of a website is known as a landing page. Okay, so that conversion should be there. This, the landing page of this particular ad which we clicked, this uh, Adidas shoe, took us to what? The specific shoe which we saw on the ad. Look at the shoe. This is the shoe we clicked on, right? Of 199 dirhams. If I go back to my to the ad, this is the ad right here. You should be able to see that same price. So let's check if the prices are the same. What is this? Provide them and go back. Okay, so you can see that the price, 199.20 dollars. And of course, most e-commerce platforms do create ads for products that they have made maybe a discount because they believe that maybe people already know about the product, they know the prices, and of course, they will come back, do their research, and they'll notice that the price has dropped and they'll want to purchase that same product. Okay. Now, what are some of the basic pay-per-click strategies or most of or some of the basic um, search engine marketing strategies? <clears throat> okay, some of these basics include, we have research, research is, some of these um, strategies are the same as um, social media, okay? Of course, before you start creating a campaign, you must do your research, research upon research. You need to do your keyword research. You need to make sure you get the specific keywords necessary for that ad. Choose which demographic you are going to target. You need to choose where you want to target, the people you want to target, the environment, the location, okay? You have location, location, location. You need to specify that as well. Make an offer that can't, uh, make an offer they can't refuse in your PPC ad. So sometimes you need to understand that when you're creating an ad, there is what we call bidding strategy. You will tell Google, Google, I want to pay this amount. I want to pay $10. I want to pay $5 per click. Remember that people are equally bidding on that particular keyword. So if your keyword is rent a car and you're bidding $9, okay? If you are, if let's say several people are bidding from $10 and above, and you're bidding $9, your ad will not be shown because you already have seven people that are bidding above nine and you are bidding below nine. You're bidding um, 
nine or below. So your ad will not be shown because the first seven people are going to occupy the first seven positions. So if you want your ad, let's say if the first person, if the first person is bidding $15 per click, the second is bidding, um, the second is bidding, let's say 14, the next 13. If you want to be at the first position, you must bid higher than the person who was bidding $15. So you need to bid at least 15 or you go to $16. So if you bid $16, obviously your ad is going to show at the top. But this is one thing you need to understand as well. <clears throat> the amount which you're bidding is not actually the amount they are going to charge you. Okay, Google has its algorithms, okay? But they always consider those who bid higher, but that is not actually what they are charging those who are bidding. You're going to learn about that maybe when you get into the advanced program, okay? Next, you need to be dynamic. You need to always make sure that you are flexible in whatever you're doing whatever campaign you're doing. Don't be stagnant. Don't just go and see people's ads, you copy the same information and you come and use the same for your own ad. You're not going to get results. Try to be dynamic. Try to get their ads, modify it and make something which is far more better. Try to utilize long tail keywords. Try to use keywords that can last for a very long time. Timing is everything. You must know the time which you're creating your ad. You cannot be thinking of creating ads of dresses, after the festive periods, you're not going to make a lot of sales, right? During the festive periods like Christmas, New Year, Easter, Ramadan, those are times you can run good ads for your dresses. During the rainy season, you can run more ads on what? Umbrellas, blankets. So you need to, be, you need to actually master your timing very well. Create dedicated landing pages with CTE. So you must ensure that um, you create very good learning. The pages which you're using should be specific. Don't be, don't be creating an ad for an Adidas shoe, for let's say for a Toyota car. And when people click on that ad, it's taking them to your home page or you're taking them to a Mercedes page. You're going to lose a lot of clients. So a home page, like what I've been saying, a home page is not a landing page. A home page is just the first page people visit, like itagrobusiness.com. That is the home page. But make sure you specify your landing page. Where is this ad taking people to? You need to do what? You need to evaluate your Google quality score. Try to measure according to from what the ads, from the ads you've done previously, compare with that of others. Try to research and see how people create their own ads. Of course, there are tools which you can do that. Because you know you are in a world of competition. For you to be able to outsmart others, you need to try and you need to, to see what they are doing. And of course, you'll be able to outsmart them as well. Okay, so your art needs to be seven on 10. Okay, your art needs to be, has to be seven on 10 to be displayed. When you are creating your art, in terms of the quality, in terms of the keywords, make sure that you create something very outstanding. Make sure that description is straight to the point. Make sure that you're bidding higher than your competitors. That's according to your budget as well, because don't just go and start bidding. You can go and bid uh, $20 per click. And after 10 people have clicked on your ad, you'll spend $200 and none of them purchase the product. You're on the losing end. So you need to be very, very smart when it comes to that. What are the advantages of pay per click? Pay per click is very, very fast. Immediately you create that ad now. It takes effect. If someone searches for that keyword you used, your ad is going to show to that person. So it is very fast. It gets targeted visitors within hours, sometimes minutes. If I create an ad now and somebody searches for that ad, immediately I will start receiving results. It provides a path for search engine optimization. With, with, with PPC or search engine marketing, it helps you to do what? To equally grow your organic, uh, your organic uh, um, ads. Because when people visit that page which you've created, maybe there are very good materials there, okay? And when they start visiting that page, it equally helps to push that page to the top because you're receiving visitors. It can yield highly profitable results, obviously. If the product which you're advertising is great, people are going to purchase it and you're going to make good profit. Great testing platform and can be highly targeted, okay? So it's a platform which you can target, you can target time of the day, you can determine when you want to show your ads, 
within the day. Geographic areas, you can choose which area you want to show your ad, maybe Cameroon, um, Uganda, Ethiopia, and so on. Keyword and phrases. There is something which we call um, phrases when it comes to um, search engine marketing, okay? Sometimes people will spell, people want to search for shoes, they will not type it very well, the spelling will not be right, but Google already understands what they are searching for, okay? Google already understands what they are searching for and Google is going to give the result. Look at something, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to Google right now and I'm going to spell iPhone, I'm not going to spell it very well. Just look at what I'm going to do. Okay, just to tell you that Google already understands what you're trying to search for. So if I type, let's say, I just put iPhone, I don't spell it very well, 12. See, I've not spelled it very well. So they already understand, they are already trying to get what I am trying to spell, okay? So if I just type like this, and Google will say, showing results for what? iPhone 12. Okay, they know that this is what you are trying to search. Okay, now they are saying search instead for iPhone 12. Maybe if that if you've cross-checked and you notice that that's not what you want, then you can come back and click on this one. And when you still click on it, Google will still be struggling to give you results. You see, they are still showing you ads for iPhone, 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 iPhone. Okay, so Google actually notes, tries to identify, um, tries to identify the keywords you're using and the phrases. They try to match it up. Content network. When it comes to Google, Google has Google is a very vast uh, search engine platform, okay, and with a lot and lots of content. So these contents are it own in different networks. So when you do your research, Google is able to do what to get this information from the various platforms, the various websites, and they are going to deliver that to you. Immediate feedback, obviously, you're going to get results immediately. You create the the ad. Okay, then we have uh, flexibility, we have easy implementation, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the advantages of um, paper, uh, PPC. Now, what are the disadvantages? Miss, missing bulk of the traffic, okay? So when it comes to search engine marketing, you only focus, they only focus on those who are interested in what you have, okay? And they only focus on the selected keywords. They don't go beyond that. That's the meaning of missing bulk of the traffic, which means that your traffic is directed to a specific, is geared towards a specific direction. There is no guarantee that you're going to make sales. There is no guarantee that the product which you're going to buy is fake. There is, is real, sorry. There is no guarantee that those who are actually advertising are fraud. That's how most scammers do, they create paid ads. And with paid ads, so long as we've paid Google, Google does not care, Google will show the ad. Google tries to reduce the level of fraud when it comes to free ads because they know that they are in charge of that. If anybody, if anybody gets away with your money online from a free ad, sometimes Google can be in trouble. So they make sure that they scrutinize the check to be sure that what you're not, what you're sharing is not misleading. But when it comes to paid ads, fraud, you have so many frauds online. There is heavy competition as far as PPC is concerned. It is less trusted, it's expensive as compared to the free ads. More complicated, you need to do a lot of studies to understand how it functions. Click fraud, like I earlier mentioned, so many frauds. You pay regardless to any sales. So once someone clicks on your ad, you are going to pay for that as a digital marketing expert, except for e-commerce, except for shopping ads, okay? There is what we call a bidding war. People are always trying to bid higher than the other. At, at a particular time, in a, in a second, in a minute, you have more than 60, 70,000 people bidding on a particular keyword at that particular moment. So the competition is very, very high. Today, you may bid and you think that you are at the top. The next day, you want to search on that particular keyword. You know that you're on the third position or the second position. You have to go and readjust so that you climb back at the top. That's just how it is. Competitive keywords demand higher bids. Keywords that are very competitive, like rent a car. Rent a car is very competitive. If you want to be in, if you want to get into competition with these top guys, you need to bid higher. Restricted to text and image ads. 
obviously we have text, image, even videos as well. So it's only restricted to text and text, image, and of course we have the video ads. Traffic stops when you stop paying. So immediately you are unable to pay for the ad, the ad stops. Okay, so what happens is that your ad will run for some time. Google is going to charge you after some time. So there is what we call threshold. Okay, there's what we call threshold. When you start running your ad, Google will tell you, you are going to be paying your bills. So when you're running ads, ads is like, you pay ads the same way we pay bills every month. Okay, so when you run your ad for the first month, maybe your threshold, um, your, 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 your billing date, maybe is on the 25th of every month. Okay, so you're going to pay your bill. Then Google does not permit you to consume their product or their service for more than a specific amount. For example, Google will tell you, yes, your pay day is 25 January, but we have given you a limit of $200, which means that if you consume $200 and your pay day has not yet arrived, you will need to pay for that $200. Your ad is going to stop running until you pay for that $200. But if by the 25th of January, you have not yet reached $200, but you've arrived your deadline, you're still going to pay. Okay, so there are two options. You're either paying when you've achieved your threshold or you are paying when you reach the deadline. Those are the two options. Okay, so it's the same like when you're paying your electricity bill. Electricity bill, they don't have a limit, right? Every this particular day you receive your bill. Okay, but I believe that it is good to even place a, maybe a barrier or a limit so that in case you consume more than your expected monthly consumption, you need to pay so that you can continue. And this helps you because if I run an ad now and I don't, and I made an error, instead of putting $1 per day, I put $10 per day, right? If there is no threshold at the end of the month, I should be receiving how much? Close to 3,000 or 300, right? I should be receiving close to $300 every month, which I know usually that my bill is about what? $30 every month. So if my threshold is $10, I know that after 10 days I'm going to pay. And after 24 hours, I've already consumed $10 and Google is telling me that I've reached my threshold. It means that I'm going to notice that there is a problem with my app and I'm going to adjust it. I'll go on now and check to see what happens to my budgeting and I'm going to adjust that and my ad will run smoothly. That is the essence of the threshold. It is very, very important. And it has saved people a lot, especially me. There are times which I run an app, I thought I used, I placed this maybe uh, $5 per day. And at the end, I noticed that it was $50. And I sleep, I wake up in the morning, I'm already receiving a message from Facebook telling me that I have arrived my threshold. You understand? Oh, they will deduct money from my account. And when I notice that they have deducted this amount of money, which is not normal, then I can go back and readjust my ad. That is it as far as digital uh, search engine marketing is concerned. Any question? Yes, I want to ask that um, you're only talking about paying the ads. How do you receive your own payment from Google? Because I've I've not heard you talked about that. How do you receive your payment from Google? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Let me let me answer your question by asking you a question. If you have a business, if you have a traditional business, and you go and pay, let's say, CRU TV or you pay a radio station to advertise your business for you, are you expecting money from them? No. What is their job? Their job is to create an advertisement for you, right? Yeah. Great. That's how Google functions. That's how social media platform functions. You are creating ads to advertise your business. They are helping you to advertise your business, not paying you. Okay? Oh. Now, if you're talking about payment, it is totally different. That one is now how to make money on these platforms. Digital marketing is about you spending money to get results. Now, how to make money on the platform is totally different. Okay? Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Any other question? <laughs> All right, 
If there is no question, then I believe you guys have understood what search engine marketing is. Now let's move to the next topic. I'm going to be talking about um, affiliate marketing. Now, most of you have heard about affiliate marketing. Some people get confused between affiliate marketing and digital marketing. Some people get confused between network marketing, affiliate marketing, and digital marketing. These are three different things. In fact, affiliate marketing, network marketing, they are all subset of digital marketing. Digital marketing is a model of them all. Now, what's affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing simply means that you, you assist, all right, a company, you help to sell products for a company. That means you advertise products on the behalf of a company to a third party. So you're acting as well an intermediary between the buyer and the seller. Now, people still get confused between affiliate marketing and network marketing. Now with network marketing, I'm just going to bring in network marketing here. With network marketing, you have to talk to somebody you need to explain to that person about a particular product or service and you are insisting. That means you have a direct contact with the person you are advertising that product to, okay? And in turn, you are going to be building what we call a network, okay? To receive benefits from that network. Now, but when it comes to affiliate marketing, you are just simply doing what? You are creating awareness about a product. You don't necessarily need to know the person which you are creating an awareness for. And when it comes to affiliate marketing, you are not actually talking to a specific audience. You are talking to a group of people. You are just, you are just creating your, 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 your ad for everybody. So when people come in and they're interested in what you are advertising, what happens? They are going to purchase that product. And sometimes when you are doing affiliate marketing, people don't even know who is advertising that product. Now, let me tell you how it actually works. There are people who have websites. There are people who are bloggers, okay? So what happens is that a blogger has a website. He talks about product. He can take like iPhone 12 Pro Max. He goes on his website. He gives a vivid description about that product. He explains the product, the specifications of the product. And towards the end of that explanation, there is a link saying that if you are interested, if you want to obtain an iPhone, you can click on this link and you are going to get the product. So what happens is that people will read the articles. After reading the article, they click on the link. That link now will take them to another website where they are going to make the purchase. And after making that purchase, what happens? They are going to receive their commission after making that sales. That is what affiliate marketing is all about. Now, when it comes to affiliate marketing, 50% of it is being built on a website. Okay, generally, when you're talking about affiliate marketing, you should have a website, generally, because you use that website to create um, articles that will educate people about a specific product or a particular service. And when they read the article, they are very comfortable with the article, and if they need that product, they can just click on that link and purchase that product. That is how affiliate marketing works. Now, there are some affiliate marketers that they don't really rely only on websites. They rely on other platforms like social media platforms, YouTubers. There are many YouTubers that are affiliate marketers. Now, how do they utilize these platforms to make money? What happens is that they create videos trying to explain a particular product, giving description about a particular product or service. And after doing that, what happens? They, below their videos, they are going to place links, whereby when people click on the link, is going to take them to another website where they are going to purchase a product or a service or a software and so on. That is what digital, that is what affiliate marketing is all about. And of course, it is a module as far as the course is concerned, which we are going to break down. I think two weeks is enough for you to become a very good affiliate marketing expert. Then we have another module known as email marketing. Now, most of you have email addresses. You've been using your email addresses. And sometimes you keep on receiving emails from people you don't know, from companies you don't know. How do these people, do you think these people have the energy 
to be creating these emails on a daily basis? These people send emails to about 10,000 people in a single click. That is email marketing. Email marketing simply means you are communicating, you're sharing ideas to people, to so many people at the same time. Okay, so how does email marketing actually work? Now, for you to become, for you to actually be successful when it comes to email marketing, you need to have what we call a lead magnet. So what is a lead magnet? A lead magnet is just um, a service or something you're willing to offer people in return for what? Their email addresses. For example, I can just come in the forum and say, okay, um, guys, I think we are done with this training and I have an ebook which I want you guys to obtain. Okay, um, kindly go to this link, click on this link, and in that link, you're going to see the ebook. Okay, just quietly, just kindly fill your email address, your phone number, and all that. Click on submit or click on download, then you are going to obtain that ebook. During that process, what happened? You are actually collecting people's email addresses. That particular ebook which I have given you is known as lead magnet. I can create an upcoming event. I can create I can create a landing page on my website, a page which is talking about an upcoming event. After creating that page, I will get the link. I'll say, okay, we are organizing an, an, an event in the next one or two weeks. Okay, those who are interested, kindly click on this link and you go to this landing page and fill in the form, click on submit, and we are going to get back to you. Once you do that, you've registered for the event. During that process of registration, what are you doing? You're filling your email addresses, your phone numbers, and so on. We are actually collecting your email addresses. After that, what happens? You will start receiving newsletters. You're receiving messages. That's why you see sometimes when you join a particular platform, fill in your email address and so on. After some time, you, you will start receiving messages from them over and over. How do you think they are actually getting to you or through your mail? It's because of the email address you give them when you were creating your account. They use that email address to do what? To get back to you. That is what we call email marketing. Then of course, we have what we call data analytics or what we call Google Analytics. Let me put it that way. Now I'm just going to summarize Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is simply a tool which we use to do what? To report to get statistics and we'll report what is happening on our various ads, both the free ads and the paid ads. Remember this, as a digital marketing expert, if you're working for a company, you are obliged to do what? To deliver reports. Now, especially when it comes to a small company whereby you are the lone digital marketing expert. There are companies that hire, they have their digital marketing manager, they have social media marketing expert. They have the digital strategies. They have all these people. Then they have someone who analyzes the digital strategies. So the job of the digital strategies is to be able to get reports from all these other specialists, generate a good report, then report back to the board of directors, the CEOs, or the, the general manager. Now, what is the content of this report? In this report, you will be explaining or trying to bring out the performance of these ads. And some of these performance could be the number of um, people that visited your ad, number of people that came from Yaoundé, Douala, and so on. How many people were able to visit your ads using a mobile device, using their uh, Android device, all right, or using their iOS device, or using their PC? How many male, how many female? You were able to generate all those reports. You were able to generate reports in terms of sales. How much were you able to make through our ads? How many people have visited our website in the last 30 days, 60 days, 100 days? That is the essence of Google Analytics. And it is equally a very vast module as well. The last but not the least is that as a digital marketing expert, you need to have some web design skills. I always lay emphasis on this. I know so many people are scared of, digital, of web design, but you need to have little skills of web development. During the digital marketing class, we always, we give you 
the web design skills you need as far as the course is concerned. We don't teach you the whole of web design. Web design is a course on its own. So we give you what you need as a digital marketing expert. Okay, because everything surrounds is being surrounded. Everything evolves around a website. First of all, you cannot create Google Ads. Search engine marketing or PPC, you can't do that without a website. If you don't have a website, zero, over 20. If you have a website, good. For social media platforms, for you to create ads on social media, if you don't have a website, 20 over, sorry, um, let's say 20%, you can work with this social media platform without a website, but you're only going to have access to about 20 to 30% of their services because the remaining 70, you need a website to do it. That's just the gospel truth. Okay, now, what are the career opportunities when it comes to this course? Um, let me see. Now, what are the career opportunities? When you go through the digital marketing course, you can become a social media marketing manager or a social media marketing expert. You can become a PPC, a PPC specialist. You can become a digital strategist or you can become a digital marketing expert. You can become an email marketing manager or an affiliate marketing expert. These are, di these are uh, different fields. So when you go through the advanced digital marketing program, you can pick jobs in these different fields. You can pick a job in the social media domain as a social media marketing expert or a social media marketing manager. You can go online, guys. Just jot it down, write it down, okay? Go on LinkedIn. Go on any job um, search platform. Type these jobs. Social media marketing manager. Social media marketing expert. Digital strategies, digital analysts, Google analytics specialist, email marketing manager or email marketing specialist, affiliate marketing specialist. These are various jobs, which means that if you go through, there are people who just go through some of these, these modules. Somebody will just study on a social media search engine. But the bitter truth is that these modules interwove, okay? There are so many things that we are going to do in search engine marketing that you needed to learn something from social media to be able to understand that. There are so many things that are, into, that are in search engine optimization or search engine marketing that you need a little bit of SEO to be able to be growth at it. That's the reason why we combine the courses. You take all the modules and that is how you become a specialist. At the end of this course, you are entitled to sit for two global exams. The first exam is the Google exam. That is one of the biggest digital marketing exams. Google exam. Recognized worldwide. You sit for the Google exams, and of course, you need an 80% pass mark before you are validated. The second is the CPD located in UK. Okay, so you have these two global exams which you will be writing. And once you are done, of course, you'll become a certified digital marketing expert. And we guarantee our students 99%. No student has ever failed in any exam since we started the institute. So we are giving you, we are not going to say 100%. We give you a 99% guarantee that you're going to make it for the exam. So after four months training program, you have one month internship. Then the next month you should be writing for your exam. The reason why we are giving you that one month internship is for you to understand, try to do some practical exam because most of the exams are practicals. They are, the, the exam, the questions that they ask you are practical questions. Though some of the questions are multiple choice, but the question which they are going to ask they give you answers in multiple choice format, but the question is a practical question. For example, they can ask you, Mr. Peter owns an e-commerce platform, okay? This is just, uh, just an example. Mr. Peter owns an e-commerce platform and he wants to run a campaign for his business. 
Which objective are you going to use in order to run this campaign? Another question could be, Mr. John just started a new business. Okay, he just started a new business. He just got his logo, his business card and all that. What can you recommend? What kind of campaign can you recommend for Mr. John? Those are technical questions that if you have not practiced, you have not done some exercises, you will not be able to give the answer. Any question? Yes, I want to ask based on the courses. You, uh, uh, is it only studied online or is it a particular, is there a particular physical, let me say, class, not online for that? Okay, first and foremost, when it comes to digital marketing, if you are studying digital marketing offline, you will not learn anything. That's the first thing you need to understand. Even if you are to sit in a class, you are still going to study online because everything is from the internet. Secondly, Tarita Group Institute offers their courses, all their courses in every field is being done online. And for digital marketing, even if you have to sit down in a classroom, you are still going to connect to the internet, you are still going to be connected to the Zoom platform so that you can follow up what the teacher is doing because the course itself is 100% practical. We are not going to come. The reason why we decided to structure this particular course, which you guys are doing right now, because from this is the first batch, right? The second batch for this course is the paid program. The second batch is a paid program to 5,000 francs for each student. The second batch of this course, this is the first time, this is the first batch, so that's the reason why we've given it out for free, okay? We are not going to come back to start telling you what social media marketing is, what search engine marketing is, what SEO is, no, we are going straight to the practical session because we believe that you already understand what we were supposed to do here, okay? In the previous classes, we have to go through that headache of trying to explain, and there are some students who still get confused, okay? But with this course, trying to segment or bring this course out from the main program, it helps us a lot because during the practical session, instead of focusing more on the practical, we will have to be giving some breaks because we need to start explaining some certain things. But now we go directly into the practical session, okay? And that's the reason why the course is four months because if we had to go through this particular training again, it's going to take time because each of these modules, each of what I've just explained to you right now, we only discuss them during the module. For example, social media marketing, the introduction to social media marketing, we're only going to say when we want to treat social media marketing as a module on its own. And social media is very broad. One month, two weeks, we are not yet done. If we are not fast enough. So having this interruption sometimes is very, very um, aching and it, it slows down the class. I don't know if I've answered your uh, question. Yes, sir, thank you. And the exams is also online. Exams online. Both exams, one directly, okay. directly from US and directly from UK, both exams. Okay. Okay, so once you're done with your courses, we, we schedule the exams for everybody. We schedule the, if you miss the, the first scheduling, then you only have to write maybe the next, the next city. Okay. Any other question, please? <laughs> Any other question? If you have any other question, please you indicate. Mm -hmm. So for the course itself, for the um, program, okay, for the program, the regular fee the regular fee for this course is $500, but we have a scholarship program which is currently running, okay? And we are going to actually, we are going to get more about that in the forum because we are going to have a briefing in the group to explain or to give you a briefing about um, the course itself. And for those who are presently in this class, for those who have attended all the training programs, we are equally going to give you guys an extra um, benefit as well. But that one will not be announced in the forum when we are talking about the course. Thank you. Yes. 
we are going to we are going to have a special consideration for those who have attended this uh, training program. We are going to talk about the course itself in the forum after this class. I'm going to reiterate about it. We're going to have a long session which we are going to break down the course. I think I'm going to handle that with um, Madame de Melura. So we're going to talk about the course itself. We give you a breakdown about uh, the program, and of course, I think from there you'll be able to know what to do as far as. Okay. And of course, if you are interested, please, if you are interested in taking the course, make sure after this class, you just indicate, okay? So we are going to just indicate. So after the presentation, at least from there, you will actually know what to do. After the presentation in the forum, you actually know what to do. So you just need to um, put it in your mind. The next batch, next, I think next month, which is March. So I think it's going to give you ample time to prepare for it. Any other question, please? Any other question? Any question? All right, guys, if there are no questions, then um, I think we we'll come to the end of today's session. If you have any questions, please, you can either contact me or you contact Madame Bimel Lira. My contact is in the forum as well. Just check the two administrators. One is the Institute and the other is Madame Bimel Lira. Get to her if you have any doubt, any worry. She's currently in Cameroon, so if you can discuss with her, if you want to have a personal problem, you guys just discuss on phone, and we're going to get a little bit of insight about the course from her as well, all right? She's equally a product of the Chicago Institute, so I think you can, you can get more and learn more from her as well. You can get an insight about the course from her as well. All right, guys, thank you all for joining us today. It was really an, it was really an amazing session. For those of you who have stood who have been here with us right up from the beginning to the end. I tell you, your efforts actually um, go in vain. Okay, we are going to actually reap. Um, uh, you are actually going to reap the fruit of your labor. The time which is not session. Okay, so thank you all for joining us. If you have any other question, you can as well ask questions. In the forum, we met at the end of Madame. Thank you guys and see you guys in the forum. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.